I recognize the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, in your opening comments, you said this was an unusual case. I, I would say that's the understatement of the year. Husband of the subject meets with the Attorney General three days before Secretary Clinton is interviewed by the FBI. Nine people get to sit in with Secretary Clinton during that interview. One of those was her Chief of Staff, Cheryl Mills, who was the subject of the investigation. Five people get some kind of immunity. Five people get some kind of immunity, yet no one is prosecuted. Three of those people who get immunity take the fifth in front of Congress, and one of them doesn't even bother to show up when he's subpoenaed. He's supposed to have been at that very chair you're sitting at. And of course, the Attorney General announces that she's going to follow your recommendations, even though she doesn't know what those recommendations are, the only time she's ever done that. So of course this was unusual. We've never seen anything like this, which sort of brings me to the, the post. I'd like to put up the post that some have talked about, which is the post by Mr. Combetta on Reddit. And you said earlier that you don't know if you uh, examined this during your investigation, so let's examine it now. I need to strip out a VIP's address from a bunch of archived email. Basically, they don't want the VIP's email address exposed to anyone. Now, Director, when I hear the term strip out email address, I think of somebody's trying to hide something, somebody's trying to cover up something, and it sort of raises an important question from these two sentences. Who's the they? who wants something hid, and who's the VIP who also wants something hid? Director Comey, is it likely the VIP refer well, actually not just a VIP, it's a very, very important person, according to Mr. Combetta. Is it likely that, that person is Secretary Clinton? Yes, sure. Okay, and is it also likely that the they refers to her Secretary Clinton staff and specifically Cheryl Mills? I don't know that. Either her, her lawyers or some staff that had tasked him with the production. So one other thing that's important on that, if we could put that back up, one other thing that's important is the date. The date at the top says July 24th, 2014. So whenever I see a date, I'm sure you do the same thing, I always look at what's happening about that same time frame, what may have happened directly before that and maybe directly after that. So I went back to your reports that you guys had uh, given to us. The first report back last month, August 18th, 2016, page 15. On page 15 it says, during the summer of 2014, State indicated to Cheryl Mills, State Department indicated to Cheryl Mills a request for Clinton's work-related emails would be forthcoming. State Department gives Cheryl Mills a heads up that she's got to go round up all of Secretary Clinton's email. On that same page, it says the House Select Committee on Benghazi had reached an agreement with the State Department regarding production of documents on July 23rd, 2014, just the day before, which I find kind of interesting. Then from your report that we got just last week, after reviewing several documents dated in and around July 23, 2014, Paul Combetta had a conversation with Cheryl Mills. And after reviewing a July 24, there's that date again, 2014 email from Brian Pagliano, Paul Combetta explained Cheryl Mills was concerned Clinton's then current email address would be disclosed publicly. So, it sure looks to me like it's Secretary Clinton, as you said but also that it's Cheryl Mills and Brian Pagliano who are urging Mr. Combetta to cover this stuff up. You agree? From what you read, it sure sounds like they're trying to figure out a way to strip out the actual email address from what they produce. Well, they're actually trying to strip it all out. PST filed everything. Here's the, here's, here's, here's the takeaway in my mind. Mills gets a heads up. Cheryl Mills gets a heads up in midsummer of 2014. July 23rd, the day before Mr. Combetta's Reddit post, the Benghazi Committee and the State Department reach an agreement on production of documents. Cheryl Mills has a conversation with Paul Combetta. He goes on Reddit then and tries to figure out how he can get rid of all this email, even though he's not successful then. He has to do it later down the road with bleach bit. And then the clincher, the clincher. Just last week, he's going online and trying to delete these Reddit posts. He's trying to cover up his tracks. He's trying to cover up the cover-up. So I guess the question is, and someone's asked it earlier, in light of all this, are you thinking about reopening the investigation? I may have misunderstood what you said during the question. I don't understand that to be talking about deleting the emails. I understand to be talking about removing from the from line the actual email address. And, but uh, anyhow, I, maybe I misunderstood you, but the well, answer... the same guy later bleach bit, took bleach bit and did, did delete emails. Sure, yeah. So my, my question is, the, the guy you gave immunity to, the guy who took the fifth in front of us, is online trying to figure out how to remove email addresses, change evidence, 
later uses bleach bit, that guy, who won't testify in front of Congress, and he has correspondence with Cheryl Mills. Cheryl Mills, a subject of the investigation. Cheryl Mills, who also got some kind of immunity agreement. Cheryl Mills, who walked out of certain questions, walked out for part of the questions during the interview with the FBI. Seems to me that's pretty compelling, and the timeline's pretty compelling as well. I'm not, I'm not following compelling of what? There's no doubt that Combetta was involved in deleting emails. Uh, after, he, conversation, he had the, after conversations with Cheryl Mills. He had the O-S-H-I-T moment, as he told us. And that's why it was very important for us to interview this guy to find out who told you to do that, why did you do that. That's why he was given use of it. you know about the Reddit post when you interviewed him? I, I, as I said earlier, I think we did. I, I, I think our investigators did. I'm not positive as I sit here. Mr. Chairman, I, I, for the, I mean, the guy's trying to, do, to cover up the Reddit post where he's trying to figure out how he can cover up the email addresses. And I find that compelling, particularly in light of the fact that just the day before, he's talking with Cheryl Mills, and, and the State Department is on notice that the Benghazi Committee wants these very documents. I find that compelling, but obviously the FBI didn't. And I, this is just one more, one more in that list of things that make this case highly unusual. I yield back. The director, some time ago you appeared before this committee and you, you told us that uh, you had exhausted all of the capability to unlock uh, the San Bernardino uh, iPhone, the 5C. Uh, did that turn out to be true? Still true. That you had exhausted all of your capability? That, that the FBI had, yes. So shouldn't we be concerned from a cyber standpoint that you couldn't unlock a phone? that, in fact, an Israeli company came forward and unlocked for you and a, basically a, a, a Cambridge professor or student uh, for 90 bucks is shown also uh, to be able to do, unlock and, uh, and mirror or duplicate uh, the, uh, the, the memory. Should, I mean, and this is purely a, a question of you appear, apparently do not have the resources to do that which others can do. Isn't that correct? I'm sure that's true in a whole bunch of respects. but. First, I've got to correct you. I'm not confirming you said an Israeli company. I'm not Well, okay. A, a, a contractor for you reported to be for a million dollars unlocked the phone. So I would ask you to confirm. The phone got unlocked, right? Yes, it did. Okay. So the technology could be created outside of ordering uh, a company to uh, essentially clandestine or, you know, re-engineer their, uh, their software for you, correct? Yeah, in this particular case, yes. Okay, and so you lack that capability. How can this committee know that you're in the process of developing that sort of technology, the equivalent of the Cambridge $90 technology? How can the committee know? Yeah. I mean, in other words, where are the assurances that you're going to get robust enough? We have a, uh, an encryption working group that was formed between multiple committees uh, to no small extent because of your action of going to a magistrate and getting an order because you lack that capability. And, uh, and we're trying a new technique of ordering a company to go invent for you. The question is, how do we know that won't happen again, that you will go to the court, ask for something when, in fact, the technology exists or could exist to do it in some other way, a technology that you should have uh, at your disposal, or at least some Federal agency should, like the NSA? Well, first of all, it could well happen again, which is why I think it's great that people are talking about uh, what we might do about this problem. Um, it's an interesting question as to whether we ought to invest in us having the ability to hack into people's devices. Whether that's the best solution doesn't strike me as the best solution, but we are, and I've asked for more money in the, in the 17 budget, trying to invest in building those capabilities so when we really need to be able to get into a device, we can. It's not scalable, and I'm not sure it would be thrilling to companies like Apple to know we're investing money to try and figure out how to hack into their stuff. Well, isn't it, and I'll be brief, isn't it, isn't it true that we have clandestine organizations who have the mandate to do just that, to look around the world and to be able to find information that people don't know you can find, keep it secret, get it out there. And my question to you is, shouldn't we, instead of giving you the money, simply continue to leverage other agencies who already have that mandate and then ask you to ask them uh, to be your conduit for that when you have an appropriate need? And that's a reasonable question. Maybe part of the solution, real challenges in using those kinds of techniques in 
the bulk of our work because it becomes public and exposed. But that has to be an important part of the conversation. Thank you. Under the immunity agreement with one or more individuals, we'll use Cheryl Mills as clearly one of the individuals, <clears throat> she negotiated a very, very good deal from what we can discover. She did not just receive immunity related to the production of the drive, the computer and the contents, but in fact received immunity under 70, 793, 18 U.S.C. 793E and F. 1924, USC, 1918 U.S.C., 1924, and the so-called David Petraeus portion, 18 U.S.C., 2071. And I'll focus on 2071. Her immunity is against any and all taking, destruction, uh, or even obstruction, the way we read it, of documents classified or unclassified. Now, the only question I have for you is, and I know you are going to put this to justice and we may have to ask them separately. For the purposes of what you needed as an investigator, because you were the person that wanted access to the computer, is that deal make any sense to, in return for things which she could have objected to as an attorney and held back, but which had no known proffer of, of leading to some criminal indictment of somebody else, she received complete immunity, as we read it, from obstruction or destruction of documents, classified and unclassified, and that is based on a re-review of the immunity agreement. Yeah, I think this is a, you're right. This is a question best addressed to justice, but I think you are mis misunderstanding it. As I understand it, this was a, a promise in writing from the Department of Justice. If you give us the laptops, we will not use anything on the laptops directly against you in a prosecution for that list of offenses. It is not immunity for those offenses if there is some other evidence. Now, that said, I am not exactly sure why her lawyer asked for it, because by that point in the investigation, we didn't have a case on her to begin with. Well, I understand that. But based on the Reddit discovery and others, um, the they asked me to do it. And you said so yourself. It was probably Cheryl Mill, the they. Uh, you have a, an immune witness who has to tell you who they were. Uh, if the they were told me to delete and that is Cheryl Mills, then in fact you have evidence from an immune witness of a crime perpetrated by Cheryl Mills, the ordering of the destruction of any document, classified or unclassified, which clearly she seems to have done. But she wouldn't be protected from that. If so, we developed evidence that she had obstructed justice in some fashion, all she's protected from is we can't use as evidence something that's on the laptop she gave. So we with still the still prosecutor. Right. So the information put into the record today, which included these Reddit discoveries, show that there is a they who asked to have the destruction of information under 18 U.S.C. 2071. If she doesn't have immunity for that order, she could and by definition should be charged because ordering somebody else to destroy something as an attorney well after there were subpoenas in place that were very specific. That is clearly uh, a, a willful act, isn't it? Mr. Chairman, would you yield? Of course. Uh, your line of questioning, well, first let me show my cards. I, I believe that Cheryl Mills has an impeccable character, as my line of questioning suggested that Director Comey and his staff have impeccable character. But my good friend, uh, there is immunity given. I don't think this applies to Ms. Mills, and I looked at the sections that you are speaking of. Uh, if you take local uh, criminal and state actions given to the worst of characters for a variety of reasons, that was not the reason given uh, to uh, Ms. Mills. I am sure that it is a lawyer that was trying to be the most effective counsel to Ms. Mills as possible. Well, re reclaiming my time, the gentlelady's point may be true. I am only speaking to the director based on things were done that should not have been done. We now have evidence in front of this committee in the record of people destroying records of activities as late as a few days ago. So the, the fact that there still should be an open question, first of all, is could she be prosecuted? And if, in fact, the they have told me to destroy this, uh, under the exact same statute uh, that included David Petraeus, uh, who was no longer on active duty, uh, 18 U.S.C. 2071, there is at least a case to be made. Now, the but problem we have is the, the, the lawyer negotiated a, a set of terms which 
hopefully doesn't mean that she gets a free pass, even if she willfully ordered the destruction of documents, which it does appear she did. And, look, I'm, my job is not to, to be judge, jury, or hangman. My job is to look at what's been presented to us, ask the highest law enforcement officer in the land to, in fact, look into it, because it does appear right. as though it is there. A brief yield, my, my good friend. Of course. Uh, certainly, we have an oversight responsibility of the director. I think he has been very forthright. But none of the actions of destruction can be attributed. I don't think we have anything in ev evidence to suggest that Ms. Mills contributed to uh, the uh, Dictating or directing. Well, the general lady may not have been. Destruction. The general lady may not so have we been can't here. Speculate here. The general lady may not have been here at the time, but the director himself, when asked uh, who would the they would have been in that order to destroy, at least said it probably was or likely could have been Cheryl Mills. Uh, we're not saying it is. No, what we're well, saying is you have an immune witness. The gentleman will suspend. Of course. The purpose of this was to set the record straight as to what the content of the document was. That has been accomplished, and the debate will continue Thank on. You, but it will continue on outside of this hearing room. And I would only, state, I would only we ask, speculate. And I would only ask that the director be able to uh, review those documents of justice and follow up with the committee. It would be very helpful to all of us. I thank the chairman. The director has answered in the affirmative that he will do that. Yes, we'll follow uh, up. I, 